West from the Mighty Mayor West. I, I first got into music, I want to say around 2009. <laughs> Riding tight down in the city with my woes Stunning is a habit, it's in my jean like your bows I stay with them shot so don't never get too close This industry is full of facts and now I got Back home, Kalamazoo, Michigan, man, this is my childhood out. 1310 Stockbridge, Michigan, seven, eight years old I remember sitting on this porch exactly, man Pops trying to teach me the harmonica yeah, this is where it all started, man. Um, a, lot of, a lot of good memories, honestly. A lot of good memories. Yeah, I was at a point in my life, man, where, bro, it was chaotic. Mom remarried, flew and went to live with him in Arizona, so she's gone. Keep in mind, I'm like 18, sister stripping. Homies wilding out, my cousins is just all gang banging. Bros in the streets is doing their thing, drinking, smoking. I stayed away from all of it because I was hooping. Just all corners of my life, bro, was just chaotic, messy, crazy. And I walked into this hip hop church, man, like mad people was inviting me to this hip hop church. And I'm thinking hip hop church how does that go like this because i come from the hip-hop culture bro you know what i mean and in this household where a lot of hip-hop things go down ain't a lot of jesus involved bro <laughs> i'll be honest almost 10 years ago at a church where I have the privilege of serving as lead pastor called The Edge. He was a knucklehead, man. Like, he did what he did on his own terms when he wanted to do it. And I think he, he learned a lot. He just even had to learn then, when he was a boy. Becoming a man, he had to learn the hard way. You know, with, with no mom, no dad, you just do what you want. You feel me? So, like, I've had nights where I dip out and do what I want, come home when I want, and I'm still in high school. That was, that was the big challenge of, you know, this is what you got to let go to become pure, purified in your heart and your mind, you know what I mean? And I was willing to do that. Talked to him a little bit, like, hey, bro, you want to come to this church called The Edge? Like, just kick it, man. Started doing everything for God, and then he came, checked it out. I think, like, the second time, he went up to the altar, gave his life to Christ, and then, so it was, it was crazy seeing the transition from that to this, where we are now, so. So, Stephen didn't have no license, right? And I don't even think the car had insurance. They have a principle called fat, faithful, available, and teachable. And if you're not those, you can't be disciple. I put it to the test. And I typically take cats from the hood and tell them to meet me out in the sticks early in the morning and say, get there. Before there was Uber, right? And so he did that in his legal car and drive out to come see me, uh, later finding out that he, he you know, breaking the law to get there. But he would do it, you know what I'm saying? To come out just to, to sit and chop. Somewhere along the line, he figured out that talking to, to someone else and bringing somebody else in his life was a value, a core value that I think God maybe had to teach him. Because there's no other way he could have gotten it. Growing up was basketball. I lived, ate, slept. Breathed. It was game time and by landslide. Only that's her blessings, ain't no rookies, only veterans, that's the thing of, I spent my whole life pouring into this thing called basketball and didn't see no fruit, man. I would say it was like an identity issue for the first time in my life. Granted, I didn't have no father to, you know, guide me to an identity or a mom because, you know, she was drinking a lot, struggling with that. So it was just like, what now moment and a look in the mirror at 18 and 19 years old of like, who am I? What am I supposed to be doing? I don't believe there's anything that Steven did all the way in his childhood to leading up now that didn't that that wasn't a seed for who he's going to be, who he is today and who he's going to be later. And I, I, I think that includes the him going and shooting 300 J's a day, having a discipline to do that. You know, to go getting up in the gym, you know, and, and going and, and going to school and working all at the same time while taking care of himself, um, <clears throat> having to raise himself. So it's just like that's a skill set. That that's a that's a, a brain muscle. So my sister actually danced in his music video 
um, actually, yeah. It's like, cause I'm a go get them. I got this here sealed like a zip lock. I represent the king, I'm bringing Jesus to hip hop. That's the first time I actually learned that he did music. Was That was the first time my sister danced at his music video. So I watched that video. Um, that was the first time I knew of him. And then we met in person in 2013 at college. So yeah, man, we're here, man. You know, say college days where it all started. You know, me wasn't the best academically, so I graduated high school with like a 2.1. So community college was it, man, with the hoop dreams and all. I remember being here pursuing the, the, the criminal justice program. That was like the only thing I was really interested in. You know, me being the adrenaline junkie, you know, liking to serve people. And even little things like I remember my dad, like that's what he wanted me to do. For some reason, he wanted me to be a police officer. Mama abused, my daddy accused. I let her read the percussion. Come from the dreadlocks. I was born out of it, It's a crazy story. Like, I mean, I can only tell my part, but once it all comes together, man, you really get to see a person that's over dedicated to his goals and his dreams. And once he met Christ, his dreams changed. It became, I'm not gonna say more attainable. So what's harder, getting in the NBA or being a successful Christian reggae hip hop artist from Grand Rapids, Michigan. So I was like, wow, God put something in his lap where who else comes to a hip hop church with a little rap skills and become one of the dopest in our genre. Like for real, really one of the dopest. Ain't that ring, ring, ring? Believe in me, hey, yeah, believe in me, hey, believe in me, hey, yeah, believe in me, hey. I was an underdog, so shy that I fell second grade when I was coming up. <laughs> now I get paid using my words, I think it's hilarious. <laughs> I really run it up. Bro said they ain't hyping up. Mama's addicted and left me alone.